It's always hard to see people who are new to succulents struggle with some of the more difficult varieties, so to speak. So today we are going to take it easy, easy, easy with the Kalinkoe. I really love this genus or group of plants. Um, they're primarily from Madagascar, and I like to think of them as having some of the most interesting foliage in the succulent world. It can be colorfully patterned, it can be toothy, scalloped, fuzzy, and sometimes it even has little plants lining its leaves. And in addition, they are very forgiving and they can be very prolific. So this is a really nice, easy plant to start with, even if you've never successfully grown a succulent before. So here is everything you need to know about Kalinkoe. There are a lot of different kinds of Kalinkoe out there, and the majority of them have upright, kind of open flowers like the ones over here. So that's gonna include things like your very popular paddle plant, Kalinkoe luciae, and this Kalinkoe blasfeldiana, which is a great houseplant if you love succulents and flowers. And a lot of them have these really colorful leaves. Some of them are, are pretty intricately patterned too. And for all of those, the color is going to intensify when they're in more sunlight. And within this group, there are a number of Kalinkoes that have really fun, fuzzy, felty leaves, um, including the panda plant, which is always a favorite, and then all of the different cultivar and varieties of that panda plant, which is Kalinkoe tomentosa. Tomentos meaning hairy, fuzzy, like it is. And then there are the bryophyllum types. And some people consider this group to be an entirely separate genus from the rest of the Kalinkoe. And that's because instead of those upright open flowers, it has these coral colored tubular flowers that just hang off of bloom stalks. And they can even attract hummingbirds and other pollinators. And a number of these have common names like mother of thousands or even mother of millions because they are extremely prolific. And how they do this is with these little plantlets or bulbils that um, grow along the edges of their leaves. And you can see a couple of them here. And each one of those can fall off and root like it's happening here. And they each make their own little individual plants. So hugely prolific. Um, grows like a weed comes to mind because if you're in the right conditions, you're gonna start finding them popping up in all of your succulent pots. But you know, if you've struggled with other succulents, this is a real easy one to start with, I would say. And in addition, they can have cool colors. A lot of them are kind of glaucous like this because they've got farina or epicuticular wax on them to protect them in direct sun. And then this one up here has got to be one of my favorites. It's a variegated sport of this plant behind it, which is Kalinkoe ex Hutonii. And the variegated one has all of these beautiful pinks coming out. And this one is in its winter colors right now, so it gets even more pink and vibrant than this. As well, when it gets its little plantlets on the leaves, they're pink too, and they look like lots of little pink butterflies. So this plant, course, gets the name Kalinkoe Pink Butterflies. Fortunately, Kalinkoe aren't the most sun hungry of all of the succulents out there, and most people find that any kind of sunny enough window is adequate for growing a happy, healthy Kalinkoe. Now, as a general rule, any of your green varieties are going to be able to tolerate lower light, whereas things that are more colorful or really fuzzy are going to be happier in part to full sun. Um, now, however, if you do see your plant starting to stretch tall or get like big gaps forming between its leaves, that's a sign that it is stretching, it wants more light, and you should move it into more sunshine. But uh, regardless, it's important to note that Kalinkoe are considered toxic if ingested. So do be sure to keep them out of reach of any children or pets who might get curious and take a bite out of them. Kalinkoe's reputation as an easy, forgiving grower extends to its soil preferences. Just because it can tolerate a wider range of soil types and even a little bit more organic matter than your average succulent. I would say, say that we still want to be in the ballpark of well-draining soil, but personally I find any old kind of bagged cactus and succulent mix tends to be gritty enough as is for Kalinkoe. Uh, I would say 
You do still want to pick a container with a drainage hole in the bottom. This is going to give you a lot more flexibility when you're watering your Kalanchoe. And like I said, name of the game today is easy, easy, easy. So do yourself a favor and use a pot with a drainage hole. Unlike a lot of succulents, Kalanchoe are native to merely semi-arid climates, so they can tolerate slightly more frequent water. And that's really good news for those of you who are in humid climates, because this is one that you can grow without it just instantly succumbing to rot. That being said, we are still gonna aim for a soak and dry cycle, which means that when I do water, I'm gonna deeply drench it. I'm definitely not just misting this. And I'm gonna water enough so that the soil is fully saturated and this water is gonna run out the pot's drainage hole at the bottom here, just like that. So now that it's fully soaked, I'm gonna leave it to dry. And I won't water again until the soil is completely dry and the leaves show me that they're thirsty, either by going a little bit thin or even flexible. Also important to note, Kalanchoe do prefer less frequent water in the winter, especially if they're being grown indoors. I really don't often see Kalanchoe having too much trouble with pest pressures, but on the off chance that you do, isopropyl alcohol is a really great solution. It's sold at drugstores usually about 70% strength. So to treat, you're just gonna wanna very thoroughly spray your entire plant and you're going to want to keep doing that daily until you see no more evidence of bugs. For bryophyllum, mother of millions types, I guarantee you're not going to have to worry about propagation. The plant's going to take care of it for you. For other types, however, I find the easiest way to propagate Kalanchoe is either from a leaf, and it's going to grow its own new little plantlet off of it like that, or from a stem cutting. And to propagate from a stem cutting, you're gonna want a sharp, clean pair of scissors or knife. And I'm gonna take the top, say two or more inches off the stem here. And that cutting, I want to leave it to dry and callous for several days. And once it's calloused over, I can plant it in soil, which I'm gonna keep consistently damp, but not soggy. And that's gonna help it establish roots. So after say four to six weeks, depending, I can give that a very gentle tug to see if it's established roots. And once it has, I can scale back the frequency of my watering and go back to the normal soak and dry watering cycle. All of these Kalanchoe and many more are available at mountaincrestgardens.com. If you enjoy this video, I invite you to subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know what you wanna know about succulents. And until next time, happy succulenting.